like to have a good day, don't you? Wouldn't you want to have more good days? I do too. That's why I picked up this book, How to Have a Good Day. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fitting. This book is actually about the science behind how your brain operates and what to do with its strengths and its weaknesses. Now, I know I just said brain science, and some of you started to kind of glaze over. I'm used to that, though. You do the same when I give a tax speech. <laughs> <laughs> but this book is actually geared directly towards this type of an audience, working professionals. So while there is some brain science in this book, it's really more about how to apply that science to your daily lives here at work. Now, there are a lot of great ideas in this book, but I only have five to seven minutes, so I've picked out three tips and ideas that I've actually been using on a day-to-day -day basis. First, I want to tell you about how to set your daily intentions. Then I'll talk about beating procrastination because we all need that. And finally, how to build relationships. So first, let's talk about daily intentions. Now, I'm a to-do list person. I like to make to-do lists all the time. And in fact, I gathered some of my to-do lists from around the house this morning. This is what I was going to do last Wednesday, last Saturday, in general, my grocery list, my wedding list, <laughs> a to-do list on the back of my to-do list, and even a to-do list for Jeff to do. <laughs> if I don't write it down, it doesn't get done. And Webb actually says that this is a good habit to have because it means less work for your brain to try and remember these things. So it's good that you're doing that. But my problem is that I sit down at my desk that's full of these to-do lists and I just get overwhelmed at all the things that I haven't done for at least a week now. Web, one of Webb's tips that I've really been using is to create a brain-friendly to-do list. This means that every day you look at these lists and you set your intentions of what you want to do and make your list based on those things. So it's, it's looking at what actually really needs to get done right now. When I sat down Sunday morning and looked at all my to-do lists, I decided ordering flowers for my wedding in October not the highest priority right now. But writing my speech for Tuesday, that was higher priority for me on Sunday. <laughs> it's also about writing down things that are more manageable and feasible to actually accomplish in that day. My take home final exam will take me at least 20 hours to complete. So on a Sunday afternoon, writing down take home final exam, I'm not gonna finish that. But writing down problem three of take home final exam is something that I could actually accomplish and I did on a Sunday afternoon. By writing things down that I really need to do on that day and that I can actually accomplish that day, I'm rewarding my brain by getting the satisfaction of getting to check that off the list. And I'm still on track to give a speech on Tuesday and finish my final exam by next Wednesday. Now that you have those intentions and in your to-do list, let's talk about how to actually be productive in doing them. Now with the internet at hand so easily all the time, it's so easy to procrastinate. I know when I'm stuck on something, my brain instantly goes to Facebook and Pinterest just in case one of my friends posted the answer to, answer to some challenging accounting question. <laughs> you won't know unless you check it to see if the answer is there. It turns out that there's actually science behind this saying that your brain is kind of like water. It goes on the path of least resistance, which for me leads to Facebook and Pinterest. And that's what I'm going to tell my boss the next time she catches me on Facebook and Pinterest. Science, Abby, it's science. <laughs> One of Webb's tips that I really like though, and that I've been using, is to tie your productivity to a reward, because then you'll actually have incentive to finish it. So for me, I'm kind of like a hummingbird. I eat all day long, <laughs> and I, I love my snacks. I absolutely love them. So for me, what I've been actually doing is tying finishing something to my snack schedule. For example, if I have to get reports to Addy at some time in the, at a later date and it's not urgent to do them right now, I tend to procrastinate. But if I know these reports will probably only take me 90 minutes if I actually sit down and do them, I give myself 90 minutes and I knock them out. And once I finish those reports, I can have my apple and my cheese stick. And I love cheese. Who doesn't love cheese? The, numer the benefits of this are really numerous because for one thing, I'm not mindlessly eating all day because I'm procrastinating. Addie gets her reports not just on time, but probably sooner than when I was procrastinating on Facebook and Pinterest instead of doing my reports. They're actually probably a little bit more accurate and better completed because I'm focused on getting them done and not distracted by cat videos. <laughs> I also get to finish something on my to-do list, so I get to check that off of my to-do list and reward my brain. And most importantly, I get cheese. 
Did I mention the shape <laughs> So now that we know how to get more done, we should be having a better day, right? Wrong. Unfortunately for us, we all have to work with other people. Now, when I was in college, I always hated group projects because I really thought that they were unrealistic and that once you got into the real world, you wouldn't have to depend on slackers to do theirs. It turns out group projects are by far the most realistic part of college because you spend all day every day depending on other slackers to get you their stuff. And they're saying the same thing about you too. But the, what Webb talks about though is that we have ways of tricking our brains into getting more out of other people and tricking their brains into getting into us getting more out of them. Our brains tend to look for similarities in people when we meet them. Now that's not to say that I'm looking for somebody who's Elizabeth and maybe five foot nine, brunette, charming and witty, that kind of thing. <laughs> but rather I'm looking for similarities that we have in common. So when I meet the new guy at work and I see that he's got a picture of his dog on his desk, my brain registers that as a good thing because he's a dog person and I'm a dog person. If I went to his desk and I saw that he had a picture of a bird on his desk, my brain would register that as weird because bird people are kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> by finding those similarities and by building that rapport with other people that we depend on, our brains instantly just want to connect and we empathize more with each other. So I'm more likely to give you, the dog person, your reports quickly and on time as opposed to you, the bird person, you're probably not getting anything out of me. But we can train our brains to do this and we can build that rapport with others to get more out of them on time. So now you know how to set your daily intentions. You know how to make a brain-friendly to-do list and you know how to beat procrastination by having more cheese snacks available. <laughs> you also know how to get more other, out of other people by building those relationships with them. So I plan on having more good days going forward and I hope you will too. Thank <laughs> you.